Hey everyone, my name's Adam, and today I have a project that I'd like to share with you. I've recently gotten into electronics, and I found it really interesting to learn more about how computers work. One of my goals is to eventually create a computer entirely out of transistors, resistors, wires, capacitors, diodes, and other just small electronic components. Here is the first of hopefully many video updates that showcase my progress. First, I'd like to thank Ben Eater and Global Science Network for the amazing videos that they've made going over computers made out of transistors. Without their videos, I wouldn't have gotten this far. I've made sure to link their channels in the description. Making a computer from scratch is a big task, so I've started by breaking it down into smaller steps. This device that I'm showing off today is a component called an Arithmetic Logic Unit, or ALU for short. With it, I'm able to add two 4-bit numbers together. As you can see, depending on which buttons I press, I can get different values on my display. This circuit is pretty messy, but I'll try to do my best to explain what I've created. At its core, I would think of it as a calculator that can do addition. If you're unfamiliar, computers do all of their operations through binary, which is a different counting system that's in base 2 instead of base 10. Instead of counting numbers going 0 through 9, binary digits can only be 0 or 1. Sometimes we'll also call these false or true, low or high, or off or on. By putting multiple binary digits together, we can start counting by incrementing the digits. Notice how for all these binary numbers, the rightmost digit seems to alternate between 0 and 1, back and forth. It might look like we're just turning that number back and forth from 0 to 1 and then back to 0, but we can actually count if we follow a simple rule. Every time we transition from 1 to 0, we need to carry a 1 over to the next digit. We can continue this pattern on and on, and it allows us to count in binary. For my calculator, I'm doing 4-bit addition. This means that I can add two 4-bit numbers together. So the highest numbers that I can add is 15 plus 15. This counting system is the foundation for digital logic. Once we have binary fundamentals, we can start looking at logic gates. These are basically little blocks that allow us to test certain conditions. Let's start with the AND gate. It has two inputs and one output. If both inputs are on, then the output will also be on. This is basically saying that if A and B are on, then the output will be on. We can put this information into something called a truth table which allows us to analyze the behavior of a single logic gate or a series of them connected together. The next logic gate I use a lot is the OR gate. It will turn on if either of the inputs are on. So if A is on or if B is on, the output will be turned on. The last logic gate that I use a lot of is called the NAND gate, and it stands for NOT AND. It basically does the opposite of an AND gate. For example, if all are off, then the output is on. If A is on and B is off, the output is on. If B is on and A is off, the output is on. But if both A and B are on, the output is off. For this project, I used more NAND gates than any other logic gates. There are several more logic gates that are quite important, such as the NOR gate, the exclusive OR gate, or the XNOR gate, but I'm not going to dive into them deeply here. If you're interested in learning more about logic gates and how I built them using transistors, I would suggest looking at Global Science Network. With logic gates covered, we can start looking at what we want to accomplish with this project. A second ago, we used truth tables to determine the behavior of a single logic gate. But let's try to make a truth table that describes the behavior of this whole system that we want. Let's imagine that we have three inputs, A, B, and C. Each of them can have a value of either 0 or 1, and we want to go over all of the possible ways to add them up. So we'll have cases where they're all 0, or they're all 1, or maybe A and C are 1, but B is 0. It's important that we have all of the possible cases. Now we need to look at what our output should be for all of these cases. It's pretty easy just to do the addition in your head and see what each value should be, but we need to remember that we're dealing with binary numbers. 
So for example, a value of two would actually turn into one zero. And now you'll notice we have two separate output columns. We'll have one labeled sum and one labeled carry out. We'll talk more about why it's called that in a little bit. Great, so now we have a completed truth table. Now we want to look to see if we can make this happen using our logic gates. Right away, I noticed that the first four rows of the carryout look just like an AND gate, 0, 0, 0, 1. And the first four rows of the sum look like an exclusive OR. If we look at the last four rows of each, we can see that we also will need an OR gate and an XNOR. Awesome. From here, it takes some trial and error to figure out how to orient these logic gates in a circuit to get the desired output. But it is possible. This is pretty tough, though. Luckily, people have already figured it out, and they created this circuit, which they labeled as a full adder. We can see how it uses the AND gate, exclusive OR gate, and OR gate, and it uses an extra exclusive OR and AND to replicate the XNOR gate. I don't actually use this circuit, though, because it uses too many transistors. I opt for a different design that's made entirely out of NAND gates, which looks like this instead. An important thing to note about this setup is that we have many outputs that share the same input, and that can lead to problems. This can cause the gates that share to fight over how much current is sent through the wires, which is no good. To fix this, we just include a resistor for each of the inputs, which looks like this. We still have inputs A and B from earlier, and now we have our C input, which is labeled as carry in. The reason for these weird names is important when you have multiple adders connected together. If A and B are on, then carry out will be on, as we saw in the truth table earlier. This carry out will go down to the next full adder and input at the carry in. It's sort of like carrying the one when you have to do addition. An important thing to know is that this makes it so that each full adder corresponds to a different binary digit. In the first full adder, the sum corresponds to the ones digit, but in the second full adder, the sum corresponds to the twos digit. The carryout of the second full adder would go into the full adder that dealt with the fours digit. So we can create a calculator by linking multiple full adders together. At this point, you might be wondering what the A and B inputs look like for these. If we're in a system like this that has two full adders, then the top full adder will add the ones digits of A and B, and the second full adder will add the twos digits of A and B. So this gives us a two-bit calculator. When I built the circuit, I extended this and made four full adders to make a four-bit calculator. Once we've done all of this, we've officially made a calculator. Now, at this point, I could just display the output using LEDs to show the sum of the digits. However, I was challenged by a professor to instead try to get this output to work on a seven segment display. That's what you see down here. And this makes the circuit significantly more complicated. I wanna mention that up until this point, the entire circuit has been made from transistors, resistors, and wires. Now, I had to add in two integrated circuits that can decode binary information to the seven segment display. Ben Eater made a phenomenal video explaining how these decoders work. I'd still be interested in trying to make one of these decoders work solely from transistors. However, it takes up a lot of space and I just don't have that right now. Even with the integrated circuits, it's still a challenge to get the seven segment displays to work. Even though these displays touch together, they aren't actually wired together. That means that the tens place doesn't know it's in the tens place. I have to send it the right information. This means that before I feed my outputs into the display, I have to check whether the number is greater than nine. If it is greater than nine, then that means that the tens place needs to have a one displayed. This is simple enough. We just need to add a few AND and OR gates, which is what you can see way up here. This puzzle is a lot tougher for the ones digit because if our input is over nine, then the display will try to show hexadecimal, which is a lot harder to read. To fix this, we need to subtract 10 from our binary value if the value is greater than nine. Here's an example so that it makes a little more sense. 
If I want to display 13, then I first need to check if the number is greater than 9. It is, so we need to set the tens place to display a 1. The ones place will still try to display 13 though, but it'll be in hexadecimal. So we need to subtract 10 to make the display just say 3. As it turns out, when you're working with 4-bit numbers, subtracting by 10 and adding by 6 actually do the same operation. So we just need to add 6 to our number, which means we need four more full adders. This is where most of the clutter comes from. It basically doubled the size of the circuit. Unfortunately, if we try to add numbers above 19, then we get back to the hexadecimal problem because now the tens digit needs to showcase a two instead of a one. This problem is a lot more complex and it's honestly something that I'm not super interested in figuring out right now. So I left the calculator at this. But at this point, after we've done all of this, we have a functioning calculator with a seven segment display. Now we can finally do some basic addition. Again, special thanks to Global Science Network and Ben Eater for their great videos about digital logic. Now that I can do addition, the next step is to clean it up a bit and make subtraction as an option as well. I'm hoping to release another video pretty soon that goes over that. If you thought this was cool, then think about sharing it with someone. Maybe they'll think that it's cool too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.